Speech communication is essential in our everyday lives. Speech helps us connect with friends and loved ones. It helps us to do business and transfer complex thoughts and ideas. We talk and listen to many people every day. But how effective is our speech communication? And how do we measure just how intelligible a spoken message really is? This is an especially relevant question when sound systems come into play. In some cases, such as voice evacuation systems, making sure that spoken messages are intelligible may literally save lives. In this short instruction video, we will demonstrate how to measure speech intelligibility in just four simple steps. With the right tools, measuring speech intelligibility can be done quickly and easily. The best way to objectively measure speech intelligibility is by means of the Stiper method. This is a fast and efficient implementation of the Speech Transmission Index method, standardized through various international and national standards. Stiper was originally designed for public address systems and voice evacuation systems, but the method is equally suited for many other applications. In real human speech communication, there is at least one person talking and one person listening. To do a Stiper measurement, you need two devices. A source of the Stiper test signal to replace the talker and a Stiper analyzer to replace the listener. When buying tools for Stiper measurements, always check which revision number of the applicable IEC standard the tools comply with. They need to comply with revision 4 or higher to ensure accurate Stiper the Vox results. and Voxbox are devices made specifically for Stiper measurements. These devices, designed and manufactured by the very team that invented Stiper, are made for reliability and ease of use. We are about to test speech intelligibility between a talker and a listener. To be more precise, we are going to test the influence that the transmission channel between a talker and listener has on speech intelligibility. The result will depend on the characteristics of the transmission channel, such as the presence of noise sources. Before any Stiper test, the talker is always replaced by an artificial source of the Stiper test signal. What signal source to choose depends on the kind of system you are testing. Some public address systems make use of pre-recorded messages. In those cases, simply upload the Stiper test signal as if it were a new spoken message. The Stiper test signal is provided on a flash drive, bundled with every Vox. However, often the speech played back through a sound system comes from a live person. In those cases, the Stiper signal from the flash drive cannot simply be uploaded to the sound system. This is when the Vox box comes in very handy. Use the sound system's microphone as you would normally with a live person. However, instead of a live person, Place the Vox box in front of the microphone. You don't have to worry about adjusting gain levels to get the signal level right. The level and spectrum of the Stiper signal are calibrated to correspond exactly to the sound of a human being. Simply adjust the speech level to the value indicated by the standards that apply to your systems. If you're not sure, the default value of 60 decibels is the most common setting. Simply press play and let the signal play continuously. Make sure that the signal is audible in all zones you intend to measure. The act of performing the Stiper measurement itself couldn't be simpler. 
place the analyzer in a position where you would normally expect a listener to be. You may hold the instrument in your hand, but the most accurate results are obtained when placing the Stiper analyzer on a tripod. Now, press Start. Each measurement takes about 20 seconds to complete. While measuring, make sure that signal playback is not interrupted and that no one is talking in the background. Depending on the acoustics of the room, your Stiper measurement results will vary from position to position. Carry out multiple measurements for each room, covering all positions and areas where listeners are to be expected. The Stiper method does not deal well with impulse noises, such as slamming doors. If this happens, discard the measurement and start a new one. If the Stiper analyzer detects an invalid measurement, the Stiper result will be crossed out. The Stiper result is an index between 0 and 1. The higher the result, the better the overall speech intelligibility. After each valid measurement, press Save to store your results. You can review saved data on the analyzer or download data over USB later on. Once you have completed your measurements, download all saved data to a personal computer. On the same flash drive that contains the test signals, you will find analysis tools for use with Microsoft Excel. These will help you to quickly and efficiently organize your data for inclusion in your measurement report. The Excel tools can also be used for so-called post hoc calculations you will be able to add in ambient noise that was not physically audible during your measurements. This allows you to do your Stiper testing in an unoccupied building, but still incorporate the influence of all the noises that are present when the building is fully occupied. Well, that's it. We've covered all the basics of speech intelligibility testing. For exact details on the test procedure you need to follow, Always consult the applicable standards and regulations. For more information, please have a look at our website or send us an email to request a free copy of our more elaborate white paper on Stiper testing. <laughs>